everyone, welcome to the weekly update. Um, what is there to say? We've got tons of tanks. There's lots of stuff coming in constantly right now because this is the best season to be buying fish. It's the best season to be buying fish tanks. Uh, lots going on right now, and I'm going to segue in just a minute to the fish. Hang tight. Okay. So this is the last week I'm gonna talk about the Fishy Business Gold Card. And I'm not gonna talk about it very much at all. I just want you to know that we are promoting it. It's 10% off for a year on any livestock. It's $50. Uh, within a 50 mile radius, we will actually come out and visit your home if you're signed up for the Fishy Business Gold Card um, and do a consultation visit. Uh, it's a lot of us. I don't know, I have something on my mind. I can't can't quite can't quite figure it out. Hayden, what do you think about the Fishy Business Gold Card? I think they're awesome. Yeah? I think everyone should have one. Well there you have it. Buy there one. Have it. Let's get on to the fish. Hello everybody, welcome to the saltwater portion of the weekly update. My name is Reagan. I'm the saltwater fish manager here at Fishy Business. For those of you that are not familiar with us or me. This past week shipment, I say it all the time, but I'm really not lying. You can ask Kat, you can ask anyone in the store. This past week shipment that I got in was one for the books for Fishy Business. Some of the things we've never had, some of the things we haven't had in at least two to five years. Um, the range and certain different types of levels of the fish that I have right now are just completely unbelievable. Like I, for the first time was pretty much speechless almost like I am now I just I really can't talk about them highly enough um, definitely a time to come in the store and check them out I've got a little bit of everything this week sharks wrasses um, more puffers eels um, I've got everything so definitely now come check it out because I'll talk your ear up about them so if you need any information just hit me up because I got you um, but now, so excited to go show you all those cool things that I did get this past week. All right, so super exciting. We finally have back in some tank bred and raised seahorses. This is the first time in years that Fishy has had these in, um, at least two years. We got some really, really nice ones. So the one you're looking at right now is gonna be your Hippocampus erectus, which is your normal line seahorse. And then the other ones that we have are Brazilian long nose. We have some yellows and some really nice fire oranges. So if you're in the market for seahorses or want seahorses, we have them in and we do have really good setups and things like that for you so that you can successfully have seahorses. All of these are already eating very well. You can see them swimming around the tank being super cute. And these are juveniles right now. Um, these guys, the hippocampus species, typically get around six inches in size. Um, right now we have them in a bio cube, which is going to be a great tank size for, for, you know, two or three little juveniles swimming around in your house. So if you want seahorses or have questions about seahorses, um, we are going to try to keep these in stock, um, at least for the next couple months while we can get them and they are available. So definitely 100%. This is gonna. This is the attraction in fishy business right now. Are these beautiful colored seahorses? So definitely come on in and take a look at them for yourself. All right. So one of the first times ever in fishy business history, we have an epaulette shark. So this is gonna be your Papon epaulette shark. So they're still an epaulette, just come from a different area of the world. So your epaulettes get about two and a half to three feet in length kind of just like your bamboo sharks, and they are just as peaceful, if not more peaceful, than your bamboo sharks. Now, bamboo sharks and epaulette sharks um, typically hang on on the bottom. They're a type of carpet shark, so your fish are gonna be safe. You don't have to worry about them eating your fish because their mouths, like I always say, are on the bottoms of their bodies. You act more like a vacuum, sucking up things off the bottom rather than running around the tank trying to catch things. Now, like what he's showing right here, your bamboos, and your epaulets, carpet sharks in general, they're a very stationary shark. They'll come out and swim when they're hungry or if they just need to move from one side of the tank to the other due to whatever reason they feel like. But also, if they find a nook and cranny kind of like this that they want to just kind of hang out, they're gonna do that. There's nothing wrong, but they're not always going to be super active. So him just chilling out right here is honestly super good. It means that he's happy and he feels comfortable in the tank. 
So these guys, because their mouths are on the bottoms of their bodies, things like clams on the half shell that sit on the bottom or other pieces of larger meats like the LRS Chunky that you can set on the bottom are gonna be really good for this guy. Typically the epaulets are a very hardy fish and as long as you have a big enough surface area on the bottom of your tank, these guys typically do very well, even in reef tanks. All right, so I'm gonna point out another tank. This is the first time that I've ever kept one of these in the store. This is going to be your eyeliner tang, also known as actually an epaulette surgeon fish. So these guys are gorgeous. They have that really stark black line right behind their eye, which is how they get that nickname eyeliner tang. Their dorsal fin, caudal fin, and uh, pectoral fins do have that really nice yellow, and they have that super striking white bar that runs right at the base of their tail right before their little spear. Now these guys are one of the super big tangs and surgeon fish. They get over a foot in length, about a foot and four or five inches, so almost a foot and a half. Definitely a super huge tank for this guy with a lot of swimming and running room. Um, these guys typically are more of a moderate care fish, although this guy has been super easy to take care of. He's been super peaceful in this tank, and they are one of the more peaceful tanks actually, which is super cool. Even though they get super big, they are super peaceful. And this guy's been super great to have in this tank with uh, Antheus and other types of porous grasses. This one's fabulous, already eating frozen food as well. He's super beautiful, he's doing very, very well. He's super healthy and has a lot of great coloration on him as well. Now, something that's super cool about these guys is that they will change color, so depending on if they are angry or upset or if they're courting, they'll change from light to dark, so that's also completely normal and super cool, and they also use that for camouflage in the wild as well. All right, guys, so this is the jeweled moray eel. So the jeweled morays um, aren't super common, but they are super hardy. They're a very easy eel to keep. So if you've been looking to try an eel, this guy is going to be perfect. They are one of these smaller morays. They only get about two feet, and they don't need a whole lot of room. These guys actually do well in aquarium sizes, even like 55-gallon tanks. So you don't need a super big tank to house them. That being said, they are more of an aggressive moray, so definitely house them with things that are bigger than its mouth because if it's small and slow and it can fit in their mouth, he's definitely going to try to eat it. But these jeweled morays are one of the most beautiful morays as well as one of the smallest, like I said. You really can't go wrong, especially if you've been wanting to try a moray. This is gonna be a perfect one for you to try. These guys also readily and very easily adapt to the aquarium life as well, which is one reason why they are so hardy and are really such a good eel to try. Um, they do need a lot of nooks and crannies to hide, kind of like this guy is right now. They're gonna feel a lot more comfortable and they are very good at eating frozen food. Big pieces, things like the LRS Chunky are gonna be fantastic. So this is going to be your Regal Angel. It's definitely one of the least hardy angels and fish in the saltwater aquarium world. Definitely an expert level fish. But it is one of your most beautiful angels that you can possibly own in your entire tank. These guys are not reef safe, just like most angels, as they're going to eat coral. And they do get about 10 inches in size, so a much longer, bigger aquarium for him is going to be needed. Um, regal angels, again, like most angels, are going to be omnivores, which means they're going to need that seaweed and that algae, as well as meaty foods to um, sustain that carnivore part of their diet. But like I said, regal angels are one of the most beautiful and just gorgeous angels that you can possibly own. Unfortunately, though, they're not super hardy, but definitely super, super stunning the same. So this is the convict tang. It's definitely a very striking tang with that white and silver body with those black vertical lines that run all the way down his body. Now the convict tangs are not the hardiest fish. Um, they are about as hardy as what you consider your powder blues and powder browns to be. Um, these guys are also can be more aggressive in your home tank. So if you want to try a convict, I would definitely wait till later on. One of the last fish to add would be this guy. And they only get about eight inches, which is still kind of big, but not your huge, super ginormous tanks like some of your other ones. Um, like I said, this guy is just so striking and so stunning with that silver and white coloration. Definitely one to try for sure, but maybe should be um, a fish that 
goes in the tank that has a little bit more aggressive fish. All right, guys, so I got in another pink face or five stripe wrasse. Um, Thalassoma kinky vitatum is going to be its Latin name. These, like I said the last time I got one in, are, have become one of my all time favorite wrasses. I absolutely adore them. They have that beautiful green and pink as well as beautiful blue. And as they get older, they'll also get some yellow highlights as well. So one of the most stunning and striking wrasses you can have. Now these guys are going to be somewhat more aggressive, more of a semi-aggressive wrasse. So really should only go with other fish that are going to be, you know, more of the semi-aggressive, certainly not anything super, super peaceful. Um, the pink face wrasses, they get about seven inches in size. So about half a foot, maybe a little bit over. So they are a larger body wrasse. Uh, that being said, they are very easy keepers. This is a very good um, beginner wrasse, but it's super beautiful and hardy enough that even experts like to keep this guy. He is not reef compatible only because he will eat your inverts, but he will not touch any of your coral. Again, one of my absolute favorite wrasses. This thing is absolutely stunning. All right, guys, so I got another puffy boy in the store. This is gonna be your gray freckled dog face puffer. So he does get just as large because he's a dog face, so he's gonna get um, about a foot in length. These guys are super easy keepers. They're a very hardy fish. Um, these guys do need clams on the half shell and hard things to chew on because that beak is always growing. And so they're gonna need those clams to help file down that beak. That way it just doesn't get too long. <laughs> and he wants to uh, show himself off for the camera today. He wants to get all up close and personal. This one has beautiful gray coloration, but he also has that really nice mustard yellow on all of his fins, around his eyes, and also around his mouth as well. So these guys are more of a semi-aggressive fish, so definitely keep um, other fish that are gonna be, going to be more semi-aggressive to aggressive with him. But these guys are absolutely beautiful, and I would definitely recommend more of a fowler tank for this guy rather than a reef. So of course I have to show you guys another trigger fish that I got in. This is the rectangle trigger or rhinocanthus rectangulatus. So these guys are also going to get about a foot in length so they are a bigger trigger fish. These guys are also very easy to keep. This is a very hardy trigger fish that do well in fish only tanks as they are deemed not reef compatible just because they will eat inverts although they will not touch any of your coral. So these guys do need those clams as well, those harder objects, because they don't have a beak, but their teeth are ever growing. So just like the puffers, these guys do need those clams on the half shell to help wear down those teeth that are going to be always growing. Now they get the name triggerfish from a trigger on top of their head, and so if you see them wedged in the rock with that trigger, that's completely normal. They are not stuck. That's what they're designed to do. They'll find a spot in the rock put their trigger up and wedge themselves in. It's a way for them to keep themselves safe in the wild and they will do it in your home aquarium as well. But the rectangle trigger is definitely one of the fan favorites here at Fishy Business. So definitely come on in and check them out. So you guys know that I'm not a damsel person whatsoever, um, but I did order two different types of damsels. So these are gonna be your Fiji's and your orange tails. They do look very similar. Your Fiji damsels are gonna have that really stark yellow belly as well as a yellow dorsal fin um, and then your orange tails are going to have a slight yellow belly not as bright and then they're going to have a light orange tail now these damsels i wanted to point out to you because these are absolutely stunning this video and any pictures really don't do them justice if you see the light on them they have super light baby blue highlights and white highlights silver highlights these guys are absolutely striking um, they, of course, are damsels, so they're going to be a lot more aggressive, even though that they're smaller. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily put them with super peaceful community fish. I would put them with larger, more aggressive fish so that they can, uh, those other fish can hold their own against these damsels. But damsels are also a really good starter fish. So if you are starting a saltwater aquarium and don't necessarily want the clownfish, getting some damsels to put into cycle with is perfectly fine as well. Hi, it's Kevin. I'm the freshwater manager here at Fishy Business. We got in two good deliveries today, some nice new arrivals, a couple things we have not had in the store before, actually. So let me show you what we got in. These are the peacock gudgeon gobies from Papua New Guinea. Actually, mine are from Florida, but 
These are an awesome little type of goby for freshwater tanks. Very peaceful, very colorful. Usually will readily take to dried food. This is probably my all time favorite schooling fish. This is the Harlequin Razabora. Very good peaceful species, great for color, get along with everybody and kind of bulletproof pretty much. Got in some really nice Gertrude rainbows. This is a dwarf rainbow type that seldom will reach anything over two inches. Biggest size they usually will get is maybe 2.5 inches. Also called the blue-eyed or the fork-tail rainbow. We got in some red lizard whiptail catfish. Very similar to a Placostomus in their behavior. They are an algae eater, but they also like to eat other sinking foods as well. Usually won't reach anything over four inches and will get more red colored as they mature. We got in some medium-sized OB peacocks. Now the OB is supposed to stand for orange blotch, but yet this batch is everything but. Mostly purple, I see turquoise, I see peach colors. Beautiful striking fish, really excellent looking peacocks we got in this room. I'm excited because I got in my favorite freshwater fish in the world. These are Geophagus surinamensis. They seldom get much over 8 inches, although I did have a specimen that I kept myself at home that got 13 inches long. Had them in captivity myself over 10 years. Beautiful fish will get long streamers on the dorsal and anal fin as they get over six inches long. Beautiful fish. I'm excited to have these. This fish is a first here at Fishy Business. These eyeballs are called piecad crocodile fish. They look similar to a needle fish. They need live food in their diet, predominantly feeder guppies. They actually, believe it or not, are actually a type of garami. We got in some of the most spectacular looking Bozmani rainbows in this week. They came in extremely colorful and good sized. We got in some cute little blue eyed cutter cichlids in. The little cutter eye cichlids usually don't get much over four inches. Pretty passive, usually do well with large community fish or semi-aggressive fish. We got in some nice black spotted spiny eels. These guys are distant relatives to like the tire tracks and the peacocks that you're used to. These came in really big. These guys are actually about 10 inches long or so. They're big. They look awesome. These guys are going to want to eat mostly worms. Also, we'll eat ghost shrimp and most frozen foods and should eventually be able to be weaned over to a small sinking pellet. My favorite garami is the pearl garami. These guys are gentle giants. Out of all the larger specimens of garamis, they usually are a lot more chill. One of my favorites for the mosaic pattern through the body. We got in some super double chubby pandagaras in this week. These guys were cost a little bit more, but I knew they were going to be bigger, but I wasn't sure how much bigger. They came in really nice and chubby. These little porkers, most of them at least two inches, which is big for those. This is a special treat we got in. We got in some tank raised panda koi's from a local source. These little guys look so incredibly cute. One of my favorite koi's by far. They like to be in groups of five or more for best results. We got in some snow white lobsters in this week. Really nice cool crustacean to have. If you're going to keep them in with other fish though, make sure they're fast moving fish that you don't cherish so much because they are omnivores and they may snag a fish or two. Usually most people do best keeping these guys in a smaller tank, in a species tank. Okay, so, uh... We had a lot of cool fish in this week, didn't we? Uh, a couple more things real quick going into March. There are new videos that are going to be coming your way. Uh, one of them is going to be a discussion type video where I'm going to ask several of the people in here certain fish questions that will hopefully help you at home with your own fish questions. 
Uh, there are, there is another, let's see, the filter sock video is coming next with Trevor. Uh, there's a great video right now, a fantastic video on seahorses because of all the new tank raised seahorses we just got in. And uh, there's a lot more coming your way right now. So but definitely stay tuned to the channel. Uh, God bless. Have a great week. And I will see you back here next week.